Hello everyone, this is Diane. I'm going to be working on book covers today, journal covers. I made this journal cover yesterday. I took a hardcover book and took the spine off and covered it with fabric. So I thought you would like to see how I did that. So that's what we're going to do today with the second book cover. I'm going to just cut it off the spine. You did see me doing this part yesterday, but I forgot to get this part done before I turned on the video. I did start, I did do some other prep work, but this is, this doesn't take long. I just cut it off the spine and then trim as close as I can to the book board any uh, loose paper. And this in this case, this book will be covered completely. You won't see any of this color. You won't see those pieces of tape. These were library books, so they had the uh, book jackets taped to them. The library sells books that they take off their shelves. I don't just take library books and take them apart. So this book cover is ready to be covered with fabric. There, it doesn't matter which is the front, which is the back. Um, I did want to show you this. This one of these journals is from my friend Debbie, and she gave me a pretty good sized piece of this fabric right here for my birthday a couple um, about a year and a half ago, or less than that. But anyway. Um, she also made me this cover for a composition book with the same fabric. So I can take this book out and replace it with another one when I'm done with this. I'm using it right now for <coughs> um, ideas for videos. But I just wanted to show you that. I know I had shown it in a previous video when she first gave it to me. So I am using this Simplicity fabric though for this cover. And I did not prepare the fabric to the right size because I wanted you to see how I do that. Sometimes sometimes it's a bit intimidating to cut into a bigger piece of fabric. I do want to make sure one lady is featured right side up because you can see they go every which way. So on this cover, she's right side up and I liked her to be a focal point there. And on this side, she's right side up and this one's upside down. But this one looks like I could get her to be right side up. Yeah, I like the way that looks. And then I won't have another one right here that's upside down. She'll be sideways. And I think I like that better. So I can feel the book, edges of the book. So I'm just making sure that this cover, well, I can put, the, put it on top. So we have enough to fold over. And what I'm going to do is just tear it, the whole length of it, into this strip that I need. And then I can use part, I can use the other piece that we don't use on the front um, that can go on the back. I wonder, I think I went this way before, yeah. Yeah, I think that might be better. It'll save fabric. Sorry. This piece doesn't have anybody right side up. Nope. Uh, we're going to go the way we had it. There we are. And I will tear the whole strip, but um, I, I'll still be able to use smaller pieces of this fabric. They don't all have to be big chunks. So, I have enough to fold over here and here. I do not need to fold it over here because this is the edge and you can see that's going to be covered anyway. So I'm going to make a little snip. 
and then I'm going to tear it. on here again. I had it this way just so I could make sure I would have a lady right side up. And I just need to cut it to the right height. So this, the edge of this book can go right to the edge of the fabric. just need enough to fold over, less than an inch, a little more than half an inch. Get rid of all those threads. And now I will just glue this down. We'll glue it to the front and then we will fold the edges over. So I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna glop the glue on too much because I don't want it to show through. But I do want the edges to get glued down well, so I'll make sure I get glue right to the edges. If I have anything that looks too, like, um, too much glue in one spot, I can use a popsicle stick or credit card or something to kind of spread it out, but you don't want to spread it too much because um, you'll just dry the glue up. So just spread it out lightly. It's still sticky. I'm going to glue my fabric down. thought about painting the cover white because it is quite dark and this background is light but it doesn't show through it it might darken it a little bit you can see it looks a little darker here maybe you can see but you can't really see the color through it and I'll just uh, smooth it all out with my brayer you could use something like this to smooth it out. Maybe. I guess it works better on paper. It wants to crumple up the fabric. So the brayer works well. You could use um, anything you could roll. A glue bottle. You know. Anything you could press down on and roll. Alright, now we have to fold the edges over. Um, this is a little bit more than I need, and I wouldn't really care except for the corner. So I'm just going to trim that a little bit narrower. I don't want the corner to be too bulky, and I could trim some of that, but I'm not going to. I have tried different ways of doing corners. And this way might not be perfect, but it's what works the best for me. So let's look at the front. Okay, so we're going to have this lady right side up. And I like that. Okay. Now, I'm going to glue these corners down first. So I just put some glue there. And I'll just take this corner and fold it in. And glue it down. Like that. Now I have this folded piece. I'm going to just put a little glue in there so it will adhere the two pieces of fabric together. So 
it makes it more like one piece of fabric that's going to be folded over. And then I will start at the short ends, it doesn't really matter. And fold them up with the glue. Corners done and the short ends done. Now we just have to do the long end. It doesn't matter if you put glue on the book cover or on the fabric. And I'm pulling it up against the edge of the book to make it nice and taut. There we go. Those covers look pretty neat. I mean the corners. And on this book, I used the shorter end of the fabric when I tore it, so this wasn't long enough, which gave me the opportunity to use this fabric ribbon, which I really like the look of. So even though this piece is long enough, I still want to decorate it like this. So I'm going to just cut this about the same. Well, I'm going to move it down so it'll be the same. Oh, yeah, it'll be the same lady right side up. Is anybody else right side up? No, she's the... Oh. We could do it this way and have this lady right side up. So it, this is longer than I need, but I can cut it. Make sure I have enough to fold over and still have her visible. So if I had done it, the fabric this way, the first time, I probably would have just covered the back of the book in one piece of fabric like I did the front but I really like the way it looks with that ribbon so that's what we'll do and you have to make sure that you have your cover the right side up if I did it this way then the spine open spine is over here and that would be a problem because I'd have to turn it this way. So, just I've done that. I I've, I've done it with the spine on the wrong side. But I have it the right way now. And I'm just going to glue this down. It's just easier to put the glue onto the book cover. threads that are now sticking to me. Glue this down before it dries. Make sure I went down far enough. And I will just go ahead and add this piece now.
Then I will just treat these two pieces of the book cover, the front and the back, like I would any other book cover that I make a journal out of. Make sure I glue these two pieces together that are hanging off. I was just trimming off the uh, frayed edges here. And we can glue the corners down again, and the edges. get all these threads out of the way so they don't get glued down. Okay, so there are the front and the back covers. Um, they don't look so neat on the inside, but they will be covered with paper, like so. I have a raw edge here that I want to cover. You don't have to, depends on the style of book that you're making. And this looks a little plain. So I have some other fabric ribbons. I've been hoarding these, but it is time to use them. I'm going to use this one because it will stand off of the page. It doesn't have the light background like some of the others. And I'm just going to glue it up here. One thing I didn't do was get this ready. This is just a digital label that I had in my stash. getting all this stuff ready. Let's make this one say memories instead of notes or journal. my hole puncher. I used it and didn't put it back it looks like so it's probably buried on my table here. Oh, it's right there. It's right there. And I have tiny little brads. I used 
pink ones here. I think I'll use the green ones on this one. I don't want them to be exactly the same. Just almost. I'm just trying to get a hold of a green one. I'm getting everything but green. Look at that. Everything but green. There's a green. Okay. Um, I sewed around this piece of fabric, but I didn't do that. Oh, there goes my green thread. There, I got it. Um, so I'm going to ink around this. going to glue this down and then put the holes in it. I'm just going to glue it to the thimble strip. But I want to try to center it after it's got this piece on. So right about there, right at the end of that red thimble, I guess, right? No. Maybe right there. Yeah, that looks better. No, it doesn't. It's not like in the middle of the strip. Yeah, it is because there's a red thimble there and a red thimble there. That's why that looks better to me, better to my eye to have it like that. So I'm gonna make sure I glue this down very well. It's just a thin piece of paper. edges to all be glued down. And I will just poke a hole to put the brad through. it's big enough. to this. This doesn't have to be right to the edge because it will be covered. And I want to make sure that I have the two red thimbles showing just to make this look centered. So I'm going to just put some glue on here and glue it down. I did not stitch this piece, which I would have preferred to. It's not that noticeable, but it does just give a little bit more interest to the piece.
This is up higher just because of the placement of the lady. It's up higher than on the other book. Now, what shall we do to the back? To cover the raw seam there, I used another piece of that fabric ribbon. Oh, I, it's already on there. I just need a little piece. Maybe these buttons. I put thimbles on the back of that one. But thimbles with the light background. I think we'll do the buttons this time. I like them. Gotta wrap that around. It's very cute. Of course, now there's a raw edge on top of that ribbon, so it wasn't really covering a raw edge. It's just, it's covering a seam. And it looks cute, makes a cute accent. Now, shall we put the book cover together? Do we have the time? We will try. This is the front, this is the back. I'm gonna just flip them over and I have my spine piece cut for two inches wide and then the height of the book covers, of course. And I'm gonna put some of my red tape on the edges of the book covers. spine piece. This is um, just a double-sided tape that has the red backing on it. When you peel that backing off, it won't be red anymore. It will just be clear. And you can get this sort of tape at all of the craft stores, the major craft stores. They some of them have their own brand, or they might have a different brand. Uh, Joann's has their own. I don't know about Hobby Lobby. Anyway, you can find it there. It was about $3 a roll. I get the quarter inch. There's one eighth inch and half inch, but I get the quarter inch. I got the eighth inch by mistake from Amazon, so I don't use it very often, but it's there if I need it. Um, but I have ordered it from Amazon when I haven't been able to get to the craft stores or sometimes I, it's not available. It's all gone and I need it. So I'll order it from Amazon. But usually if, if I see it at the craft store when I'm there, I pick it up because it's $3. To, uh, it's a little over $3 now to add to my purchases and it just keeps my stash replenished. But this is very strong and sturdy, and I like using it in my cover construction. I think some people just use Fabri-Tac, and it works fine. But this is what I have used for a very long time. The worst part is getting the backing off sometimes. But we got it.
Okay, now I have shown this many times on my channel, how I construct the book cover. But I'm lining this up on my grid. I'll put it over here so you can see better. The side and the bottom are lined up so that they're straight. I'm not really using measurements, I'm just using the straight lines. And then I'll take the center piece, the spine, and just line it up with a little tiny gap so that the book cover can move, can open and close, but not too much of a gap. And then, and it is straight along the, whoops, it was straight along the bottom until I touched it. And it is a little tricky because there's tape and your fingers are going to stick to the tape and you pull your hand away and you move the piece. Happens to me all the time. And then again, just a little bit of a gap. See that move a little bit when I pulled my hand away? Okay. Now, I usually cut this before I get tape on here. This is my um, um, Tyvek. And you can order that from Amazon too. I will link both the red tape and the Tyvek in the description box when I get them from Amazon. And I'm just going to lay this down without disturbing the placement of the pieces. And now they are all connected. The Tyvek is a little bigger than I need, so I can trim that if I want to. It will be covered. I didn't want to lay the tie back down to measure it more closely and get it stuck to the tape. So that's why I usually cut that before I add the tape, if I remember to. And it doesn't matter that it's jagged because, like I said, it's going to be covered. <laughs> I got some jagged edges here. Now, I do have the... Um, fabric for the spine already cut. I'm using the same fabric that I used on the other. So I think this is the right width. I don't think it's even. I tore both edges to try to get it even and it's not. And probably a little wider than I need. So let me see here. Yeah, it's a little bit wider at that end, but I might not need that end. It's uneven there. Usually if you tear it, um, you get an even piece. I'm going to cut it so that it is the right length, and then we can worry about the width. So I want it to wrap all the way around and overlap slightly. Now let's see if it is the same width all the way. It's a little bit narrower there and wider here. So, I'm going to try. It's really hard to tear a tiny little piece. It's pretty much impossible to tear a tiny thin strip. So I'm going to try to cut it. And that looks better. This is a finished edge. It's a selvage edge. So I'm going to let that be the part that shows, even though it's going to be covered by um, signatures. So I always put the little end at the bottom. And then have the outer end facing down. And it's usually a raw edge but this time it's a finished edge. Got 
let's see how much it covers over here. I don't usually have it this thick on the side, but I kind of wanted to on this, but it's thicker than this. So I'm going to trim this a little bit. I thought I had this piece already, and I don't. Those are garbage trucks you hear. Let's see if this piece is... Yeah, that's thick enough to tear. Now we can start gluing. And if some of the Tyvek shows, it's okay, because I'm going to put paper over it. it. Looks like it's not showing. I'm going to glue the, the short end down. trying to look and see if the same amount of fabric is on the front and the back I can see here. My hands are in the way, weren't they? And then I will glue down the spine that shows on the outside. I just put my bottle down there so I would know where to start putting the glue. And there will be stitches when I sew the signatures in to help hold the fabric down. But I want to make sure the edges get glued down. Wrap it up. Yep, that's right where I wanted it so that the red thimbles show. I'm glad I trimmed it. And then glue this piece down. Once you do this as many times as I have, it doesn't take that long. This is a pretty simple way to create your spine. I don't do the rounded um, hollow back spine. I will attempt it again. I have made a couple. They didn't turn out as nicely as I would have liked. So I would like to practice and do more, but this is what I know, and I like it. And now we need to cover these raw edges, just make this look prettier. I used hot pink on this because there's a lot of bright pink on the journal kit. And it's that might be a rosy red there, but otherwise there's no pink. So I introduced pink on the cover in the thimble fabric and in this ribbon. And they do blend in nicely with the color there. So it is a nice, um, let's do it this way. It is a nice uh, color scheme on the cover. And I think it will merge well into the digital kit. I was concerned about this and the digital kit, but I think by introducing the color pink here and then here, I think it'll look nice, but I thought maybe I would just use a green on this one. It's going to use the same journal kit, but I think, and we have red thimbles there instead of pink, so let's hope it all looks good. I'm just going to mark. I don't measure. I just mark. Unless I have to measure. Um, this is where the book is going to bend. So I want to make sure I cut it before the bend. And then I have to cover the edges of the fabric. So that's going to be a measurement of our uh, end papers. I'm going to cut off the height sure I did that right. Looks good. And then I'm going to fold it in half.
and I can cut along that mark and I'll have both of my end papers cut. Eleven o'clock already. Day is going by fast. We might have time to glue the ribbon on the front too before we're done here. book plate pocket but not today I do however want to cover that raw edge and I have this ribbon here let's see if it works because I have more red than pink on this one I think it works and it will help introduce that pink color again There is a pink button there. Just got glue all over my fingers. So all I have to do is glue the ribbon down so that it covers up the raw edge. Sometimes I use lace to cover the raw edge. You can use um, paper that was cut with a border punch to make it pretty. Other kinds of trim. There we go. There's our book cover. Thank you for watching. And I hope you'll come back to see the progression of these journals. We've already seen some of the ephemera being made. You saw pages that I selected. I haven't cut them yet. So we're getting some headway um, on these journals. I don't know if I'll have them done by the end of the year like I was hoping, but I'm not going to like push myself to do that. I have other things to do to get ready for Christmas and the new year and all that. So it's just something I am working on and enjoying the process. That's my goal for these journals is not to try to rush but to enjoy it. And I hope you enjoy watching. Thanks for watching and I hope you're having a creative day today. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.